Hey y'all, so we bike with another episode of Bell Collective. The opening scene, um, Tisha and Marie has invited Akeisha out to lunch. Akeisha says she's very skeptical um, from the way that the ladies uh, initially felt about her. But if they like her, they like her. If they don't, they don't. She really don't give a shit. It's Akeisha and her confessionals for me. Always saying something different than what she's saying in front of the lady's face. But anyway, she says she's disappointed in Tamara. You know, they've been friends. And she she didn't want the ladies to... Well, she realized that the ladies, because of their preconceived notion, that she they felt the way they felt about her. And she said that she's not that person. She said sh her shady to her is somebody that's underhanded, cutthroat, and whatever. And shady is shady. Period. Like, you coming onto this Ferris Street project, taking over because you have a coin and ain't nothing wrong with that Tisha girl you just inspired her that's all you inspired her period so so the ladies decide to put the Fabric Street project I mean excuse me the sistervention incident behind them Letitia her confessional said that she's glad Akeisha decides to put things behind her so that because because they have one interest which is the Fabric Street project and getting it back up and running and they're gonna do it good luck tisha good luck on that one good luck on that one because akisha seems like she really trying to take over this fabric street project um and get the shine for that girlfriend so and it's nothing wrong with that but you did come in via latrice not latrice Letitia, if i'm not mistaken um and moving on. So the ladies talk about um, Marie and her mom and how her mom is missing. Marie said nothing good going to come from that. You know, she's been through this cycle so many times. She know that it, it just can't be good. So she brings up that her and Essie, well, herself is the first black woman to open up an opioid, opioid addiction clinic. She's trying to open up five and she's having a celebration and she want all the ladies to come out. Then they talk about Tamara, um, Letitia having a conversation with Greedy after the, the um, pageant, not the pageant, the fashion show, and um, how security came over. And Letitia, you know, going in about Tamara, like, why are you so worried about Tamara and her relationship? Or, what are you trying to expose? This is what I want to know. But anyway, because it's given Tamara's my storyline, for real. So we go to a scene with Tamara and greedy aka demon or demon aka greedy they go into a uh, restaurant montes i think it said um tamra got on her satin yellow dress i don't know but anyway girl so they sit down at the table they start talking um basically tamra said that she was not she saw the ladies come up to demon talking and she was not about to let them have a conversation about the decorator the decorated, a.k.a. Tasha, which she doesn't say her name. And she was like how the ladies is saying that he has an emotional connection to Tasha. And he was like, I don't have no damn emotional connection to Tasha. He said he don't play about Tamara when it comes to her. And he doesn't feel like it's right that they coming at Tamara that way. So then he goes on to, um, well, Tamara lets us know that they having a lot of sex, okay, to try to have a baby. And he goes on to say that, um, you know, they're moving in a different direction and that maybe she should move in. And Tamara was like, well, where's the ring? There's no ring. Um, but Tamara, y'all having sex before marriage. So, like, at, at this point, what's the big deal? I mean, I get it. You want the ring, but what's the big deal? So she lets him know, we doing things backwards or whatever. At the end of the scene, he was like, you moving in. She thinks it's sexy that he's being authoritative. He said they got a good thing going. Tamara going to be moving in with him. And another thing that happened in the scene, which I forgot to say, is how they clown Tasha in their confessionals. Talking about, is she a fatal attraction? Like, Tasha, leave that alone. Leave that alone. Then next we have the scene with Maurice, who sits down with Glenda, who's Raven's mother, who is Zane's grandmother. Um, she says she's been so depressed since, you know, the loss of her daughter. She just wants justice for her daughter. And at this point, they still don't know who did this to her. Um, the grandmother wants 
uh, Jerez to basically finish his education to better himself so that he could take care of of Zane and they're willing to make the sacrifice, you know, for him to go back to school, finish his education, and the grandmother's is going to make sure they stand up and pray, um, which is a beautiful thing. This was like a sad scene. It's really sad because you just don't know what to do after something like this, especially when you don't know why it was done and who did it to her. But I pray them the best. I pray that Jerez stays on the right track, get focused. Um, I think this will keep him on track, though. I wish him the best. I wish their family the best with Raising Zane. Then we have this drive-by baby shower, which she, which uh, so Gucci said that the daughter only wanted people to come by, drop off a gift, show some love, and leave. I ain't never heard nothing like that. Uh, whatever. That's I guess that's something new. Um, the girls, JJ daughters, show up to support. You know, to lend their hands and hope that they could be in the baby's life. They put their differences to the side. Then Latrice shows up in her green. I'm going to tell you one thing. Latrice could dress. Her makeup is always on point. Her hair is always on point. I, I can't even take that away from her. So, um, so Gucci's daughter, uh, JJ drives up with a car, with a bow on it, surprises her with a car. And then next thing you know, they pull off. So they sit Latrice down to sit in a chair in case she wants to have a baby so she can see what it feels like. She was holding a baby, looking all uncomfortable. <laughs> that was so hilarious. You know, she wants a baby, but she don't want a baby from her childhood traumas, you know. But that was that one, that scene. Uh, a little weird scene, but that was... Oh, it. and Latrice let it be known that she missed her period, that she might be pregnant, so she's not going to drink. Um, She said either it's you know, her being pregnant or her being stressed because she's been very busy. Yeah, but that was that on that scene. Then we have the next scene with Latrice and Clifford, a.k.a. Zeddy. Um, she lets him know that she's very stressed. And Clifford was like, well, what do you want me to do to help you relieve some of this stress? She lets him know that she have not had her period in two months. Um, they discuss her being... She said, do you think I'm a great wife, you know, so it was a great wife versus a good wife type of thing, you know, he feels like she works too much, she says she's career driven because of where she come from, like she didn't have much, she has a lot now, and she don't want to lose it, and I could kind of feel her on that, um, she says her fear, uh, of having a baby is, is that her baby is going to get what she experienced, like her father was not around for her, Cliff said he's going to be there for the baby, even if she's not his wife. Um, I don't know if this was a real argument at this point or whatever. Cliff wants a baby. She don't want a baby because of her past traumas of growing up as a child. So he was like, you know, he wants to have a baby. She doesn't want her husband to dictate what she does in her life. And in my head, I'm like, I thought this was a marriage. I thought y'all was supposed to make decisions together. That's why I don't know if this was a real argument or not. And at one point, Cliff said, you know, he wanted to travel with her, but she wants to work so hard. And I'm going to just say, Latrice, you need to learn how to balance it all because you're going to regret later on in life how you're going to be like, I didn't get to travel. I didn't get to have a baby. And I ain't mad at her decision of her because everybody is not meant to be a mother or don't want to be a mother. So... I ain't mad at her decision, but I feel like she needs to create a balance in her career life, her home life at the end of the day. Then we have Marie's event where her and SC are opening up a methadone, a few methadone clinics, and they are the first black women to own these type of clinics. Um, am I, I had a little side note. Is it me or these events are just for them? Because where's the people? You could kind of tell this was just a scene that was put together. But anyway, we're going to move on. Um, So, you know, they give um, each other accolades. Marie gives Essie props, you know, or whatever, and everybody congratulates them. So they go up to the side, and they were eating, and they asked Latrice about, I meant to say, uh, Tambra. About the security guard. She said, well, the security guard was just there for me because it was the end of the night. 
Tamara, you coming off as so fake and phony, but whatever. Latrice said that um, she don't want her relationship to be outed because it's a fake relationship. Um, then the ladies go sit back down. Akeisha's having an event, a luncheon for the stakeholders. Um, it's only a, a selected few that will be invited. She said it's going to be short. She just want to introduce herself and her vision for Farrah Street and her and her husband bar that they're going to be opening on Farrah Street. Child. Letitia fakes change real quick. Okay. So Tisha was feeling the way to find out that she's not going to be a part of the project with Akeisha. But don't be surprised, girl. Akeisha's one of those people because she got a coin. She felt like she'd come in and do it better. That's what I, that's the vibe I'm getting. That's just my opinion, but that's the vibe I'm getting. But Tisha, again, as I said in the beginning, you inspired her. Okay. She's, she's accomplishing the mission. And the mission is to get Farrah Street back up and running. No matter how it gets done, it's going to get done. Um, so Glenda shows up to the event, which is, um, Zane's grandmother, you know, and they give her kind words. She talks about how she's depressed. Or As Latrice is giving her inspirational speak, you know, letting everybody know that black women are strong and we don't look like what we've been through. And then in walks Tasha and Tamara's whole face changes. And, you know, these people are shady. But Tamara said that she is not going to talk about Zaman, a.k.a. Greedy, because he's not here to defend himself. And then Latrice and her um, confessional says, oh, shoot, Greedy, sneaky link done walked in. Latrice is a whole mess. Anyway, Tamara decides to get her pretty little self up, get unmiked, and walk out of the event. And as she's walking out of the event, Tasha says to her, come on and talk to me. You could talk about me to everybody else. And she says, you talk about me to everybody else. That's what Tamara said, I believe. And then she said, you're desperate and crazy and walks out. And the look on Tasha face when she said that I was like, mm. listen, Tasha, this is a face of a woman who was dealing with a man. I'm going to say allegedly greedy, you know, who believed in everything he said, got all caught up, Allegedly. And now she's scorned, okay? She feeling the way that Greedy dropped her like a bad habit once Tamara was like, she want to get back with him. But anyway, that was the end of the scene. And um, I don't know. I don't know. This was a little more, inter- this this um, episode was a little more entertaining than the last episode. And um, we're going to see what happens in the next episode. But thanks, guys, for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Come down in the comment section. Let's have a discussion about this episode. Thanks to my new subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. Peace.